So hey there everybody and welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich Charpentier, I'm the channel host and right now you're going, boy, this video quality is terrible. You're right, video quality is absolutely atrocious at the moment because I wanted to show you a, an extremely lighting challenged room. So standing in the living room here behind me, we've got the kitchen area, the little dining area. We've got some great windows here that uh, often offer some amazing views. And depending on how you set up your video camera or your still camera, um, you're going to be dealing with some major lighting challenges in a room like this. So it's much darker in the direction of where I'm filming from, much brighter over here. And there's only so much that a good camera can do. Now, recently we picked up the Theta Z1. So that is a 360 degree camera and we've been working with it and learning with it uh, over the past couple of weeks. So I'm still getting my feet wet with the Theta Z1, but what I wanted to do is take you through a challenging location like this to see what the Theta Z1 and its bracketing mode can do. So the Theta Z1 can shoot JPEG or it can also shoot uh, DNG RAW files. With those RAW DNG files, we can address the dynamic range only so much. But one of the great things you can do with the Theta Z1 is you can actually bracket the shots. So we can expose only for the windows and then we can expose only for the kitchen area. We can expose for this darker area that's going on back here. So the Theta Z1 gives us some flexibility when we're building a virtual tour if we're not carrying, let's say, a digital SLR with a 360 bracket with it or if we're not using off-camera lighting like a portable strobe. So in my testing so far, I have found that the Theta Z1 can actually really handle all these brights and darks if you just set up a good set of brackets. With that in mind, before we do anything else, let's move so that we can see some better color quality and some better video quality. All right, we've moved the iPhone around, so now the camera is filming me and I'm being lit by those really great bay windows behind the camera. So now I'm looking a little better, but you can still tell that this is a much darker area. So we've got a lot of extremes of lights and darks, and we're going to address those extremes with the Theta Z1, which is right here on this little light pole. And um, we're going to set up a couple bracketed shots. I'm going to record that. We're going to take five photos. And then we're going to go over to the computer. We're going to offload those photos. They're going to be all DNGs, so they're all raw. We're going to merge those together in the Lightroom HDR, which is not a heavy-handed HDR. It's, it's, it's a, a very light touch for some very realistic HDRs. So we're going to combine the five images. And once we get those five images set together, we're going to send them on over to another application called PT GUI. That's what I like to use for stitching panoramas. And we're going to set up that final image for a 360 viewer. So we're going to take you through all that. Like I said, I'm really new with the Theta Z1, so we're doing a lot of testing here. And I thought I'd bring you along with my testing so that you can see, hey, I've got some extreme lighting situations in, uh, in a client home or maybe a business that you're doing a 360 virtual tour for. And the Theta Z1 really can achieve a lot when you're doing a bracketed mode with DNGs. So, all right, next part, you're gonna see me moving around and things, but uh, I'm not gonna be right on camera, but I am gonna be talking to you and talking through the process of setting up the Theta Z1 for that multi-bracketing. So, not gonna be the best video quality, but it's driving the point home that this is a very challenging room. All right, everybody, so one more time. Now we've moved the camera around, so we've got the, uh, We've got the bay windows here and they're actually what we're metering on. So you can see that a lot of other parts of this area are going to be really dark. So this is not going to make for a really easy pano, but the Theta Z1 actually offers a multi-bracketing solution that really is going to help us out a lot. So I'm going to move behind the camera in a minute and we're just going to go through what we're doing with the Theta Z1. So I've got my iPhone 8 here with the Theta Z, uh, the Theta's app. And we're in the regular mode right now, but we're going to change that mode. So I'm gonna move out of this frame here and I'm just coming around behind the camera, but this is the Theta Z1 is gonna actually pick me up as well. So in the upper right hand corner, we have a little cog up here and this is for our shooting settings. 
So the shooting method, I'm going to pick multi-bracket. So the multi-bracket mode is the one that allows us to take several different exposures, take all of those shots, and then we can merge them together uh, with our favorite HDR solution. I'm just gonna use Lightroom for a very light touch HDR. The other thing that you need to notice on the uh, shooting screen here is the file format right now is JPEG. We want to switch that to raw DNG and JPEG because we're going to be using the raw DNGs to merge together to make our final HDR. So we're just about set to go. I'm going to hit the uh, done button here and now we have a multi-bracket. So this is the last multi-bracket that I set up and you can actually change your multi-bracket modes around. So this one has five shots. So we're going to be taking five images and we're going to be taking those at different shutter speeds. So we're keeping the f-stop the same at 5.6. We're keeping the ISO the same at one, uh, let me see, at 80. Sorry about that. And um, then the shutter speed is going to be the thing that varies. So let's take a look on screen. I'm just going to tap the first one. So this is a pretty quick photo at 1 80th of a second. As you can see, we've got the detail out the windows, but we don't have any other detail in the room. We can see, you know, one set of doors in there, but that's about it. Very, very dark. Our next exposure is gonna be at 1 20th of a second. So a little longer of an exposure allows some more light in. So now we're not getting all the detail out of the windows, but the overall room is brightening up. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done on that one. Now we're gonna move over to the next one. And now we're at 1 10th of a second. Definitely something you wouldn't want to handhold there. You'd get a lot of motion blur. Also, you can see in there that I'm back here. So the 360 is picking me up and uh, getting me in the frame. I'm gonna hide behind a wall after so that I don't show up in this particular shot. Let's hit the done button again. And let's move on to 1 5th of a second. Look at this, it's really bringing everything up. The windows are completely blown out, but now we're starting to see into the kitchen area and we're starting to see more detail over in the living room area. All right, let's hit done on that one. And let's take a look at that last one at uh, one, almost a half a second, we'll say. Um, and you can see now that the windows are just about completely blown out. Um, the areas that weren't exposed well in the first shot are gonna be exposed well in this one. I could add additional brackets in if I want to. So in the multi-bracketing mode on the screen, you see the little plus symbol down below the shots that I have. I can tap on that plus symbol and make another bracket. So we could do even a more overexposed bracket if we're worried about some of the shadow areas back behind me. But we're set to go now. So this is a very quick, very simple setup. And once again, you can make your brackets, you can make as many brackets as you want. Maybe you only want to do three brackets, one severely underexposed, one overexposed, and one in the middle. But I'm finding that five brackets is working very well for me. Now there is another plugin for the Theta Z1 called the Dual Fisheye plugin that also helps with bracketing and has a couple other features. But I'm finding that I like the multi-bracket shooting that comes with the Theta Z1. But if you're interested and curious, by all means, go check out the Dual Fisheye uh, plugin for the Theta Z1. All right, I'm going to go hide now. So we're getting me out of that frame and we're just getting behind a wall so it doesn't pick me up. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the shutter button. What's going to happen now, if you're looking on screen, it says remaining five photos. The first photo is at 1 80th of a second. All the other information remains the same. Now you'll notice the change, remaining four images at 1 20th of a second. Now we're going down to 1 10th of a second and three remaining. And there we go, two remaining, 1 5th of a second. And then basically the last one is going to be a half a second. And there we go. Since we have done this on the mobile application, we're doing DNGs and JPEGs, um, you can't transfer the DNGs in the native app. So you're not transferring the DNGs to your smartphone or your, uh, or your tablet. So you're actually going to need to connect the Theta Z1. You're gonna connect that up to your computer to offload those DNGs. So what's gonna happen next is we're going to stop this part of the recording. 
we're going to go into the studio room, we're going to offload the DNGs from the Theta Z1, we're going to merge them together in Lightroom for an HDR, and then we're going to take that HDR and we're going to stitch it in PT GUI. Now, Theta Z1, uh, Rico offers a stitching software as well, um, which you can use so you don't have to use PT GUI. But unfortunately for me, I've had some problems with the, the Theta Stitcher and exports from Lightroom to the Theta Stitcher. So rather than get aggravated and fuss with it, since I'm already a PT GUI user, I've gone ahead and made the decision to use PT GUI. Now you can use the, uh, the Theta Stitcher in a very similar way. Hopefully you don't run into the problems that I've had. All right, let's move on to the studio for the next part of this. And once again, sorry for the strange video, but you know, it is a very challenging lighting environment. And how can you make something like this look amazing? Well, number one, you could take an off-camera flash to do some of the heavy lifting. But in this case, we're just going with those bracketed exposures to see what the Theta Z has done for us. So, all right, everyone. Hey, look, good exposure of me finally after, uh, after all that nonsense out in the kitchen and living room there. So I've come into the studio. I've turned on Lightroom with my 360 Pano folder, uh, my 360 Pano uh, catalog, I should say. And I'm now going to hit import. So the Theta Z1 is connected up to the computer right now. And it's going to show us what we've got in here. So as I said, it's shooting DNGs and RAW files. I'm not going to import those RAW files. We're just going to import the DNGs because that's what we're going to be working with. And let's see, that's a DNG. So there we go. And let's go ahead and label this uh, YouTube bracket. So these will be the YouTube bracketed photos for this particular tutorial. I'm now going to go ahead and hit the import button here and we're going to get our current import on Lightroom. So remember we shot those five brackets out there in the living room slash dining area and kitchen and we had some extreme issues with lights and darks. So if you just went in you know with a basic camera um, not using off-camera flash or anything and just snapped some photos uh, you would not be too impressed with the final quality. So when you're doing interiors for real estate or you know any other reasons that you're doing interiors, you're always going to be challenged with lights and darks and oftentimes you're going to need an external strobe or you're going to be doing some kind of high dynamic range setup like this. So we've snapped off the five DNGs. Let's take a look. So ISO 80, I'm looking in the upper right hand corner where the histogram is. So we've got an ISO of 80, f-stop 5.6, and 1 80th of a second, so a pretty quick shot. So we're getting detail out the windows, but we certainly aren't getting detail in the rest of the building. Let's arrow over to the next one. So we brought that exposure up by going from 1 80th of a second to 1 20th of a second. Still at f5.6, still at ISO 80. Gonna arrow over again. You're not getting the detail out the windows anymore, but you are getting more detail into the living room and into the kitchen area. So we're, we're bringing things up. Next one is uh, one fifth of a second. And so the longer exposure is allowing more light in. So we're brightening some of those dark areas up. Finally, the last one, maybe we should have done a little, one more that was a little more overexposed even, but we're gonna go ahead and run with this. So there's a lot of HDR applications out there. The HDR in Lightroom isn't true HDR, but I think it does a nice passive job. It's not, it's not super punchy like a lot of HDRs are. It comes out very realistic normally. So I think that this is a great idea when we're trying to give a realistic view in a 360 piano um, for an interior. So I'm gonna right click on this group and we're gonna go down to photo merge and we're gonna merge this to an HDR. And this is gonna take a couple moments, so you'll have to bear with me. So Lightroom is doing its thing. It's creating this HDR preview. And so far in the testing with the Theta Z1, I'm becoming more and more impressed with what it's doing for me. So in here, you can see we've got, putting all these together, we've got some detail out into the living room. And you saw that, that video of me in the living room you know, with that really 
terrible uh, set of lighting conditions and you know where I should be placing the camera where I shouldn't and um, here we're getting detail almost everywhere I'm gonna go ahead and say merge this it's looking pretty good it's not perfect and maybe I had the color temperature a little too low so I'm not going with automatic white balance in these situations I am picking um, custom uh, color temperatures for this and uh, that way it's not too warm or too cool but I think this went a little more toward the cool side and we can actually deal with that so there is our new bracketed HDR so it looks like the other ones but we've got that detail out the window I'm gonna go into the develop module because I really like those window pulls so I want to see if I can get some more detail out of that window pull so over on the right hand side we're in Lightroom's uh, editing area I'm gonna just drop those highlights down Look at the detail through those windows. That is awesome. Now the rest of this is looking a little too dark, right? All right, I'm gonna push up the exposure by 1.75. So we still have that detail out there. I'm liking that detail a lot. And I'm also gonna grab the white balance tool here, the eyedropper, and I'm gonna drop right in there. And so that definitely did warm things up a little bit. So it's not a little too warm. That is pretty close to the true colors in there. This weird uh, warm golden tan throughout the house. Uh, not the easiest thing to shoot around. And I'm, uh, I'm just taking a look in here. I want to zoom in, make sure we don't have a lot of pixelation or anything. And we really don't. The final cleanup of this is going to be after we've stitched it together. Because I found that if you make a lot of alterations before you stitch the piano together, it could screw up the edges and not allow things to align properly. So what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna right click in this window again, we're gonna go down to edit in, we're gonna edit in PT GUI. Now on the last section of this, I mentioned that I'm using PT GUI, but most people who are using the Theta Z1 are most likely going to use the Theta's stitcher. So I'm going to click out of here and we're just gonna go down and look at applications and right down in here we have a folder for the Rico Theta Stitcher which does the same thing as PT GUI. The only reason I'm not using the Theta Stitcher is because it's not playing nice with my Lightroom um, for the export and import. I've been having some problems with it and I haven't read around the forums yet to find out what I'm doing wrong. Uh, but instead, I already said to myself, hey, you've got PT GUI. You know that you can export from PT GUI, uh, export from um, Lightroom to PT GUI. So why not just go ahead and use it? So that's what I'm going to do. So I over here, I right clicked. I went down to edit in and I went down to edit in PT GUI. Now, in your case, if you follow Rico's instructions, it's most likely going to be that you'll be using their stitcher. And that's perfectly fine. Both of these things are doing the same thing. So now we're sending that over to edit and PT GUI and it's going to take just a moment here and uh, it says it's preparing the file for editing and we've got the computer doing a lot of things right now, right? It's recording on OBS, um, it's uh, doing these alignments, it's doing the stitching and so here we go, we've got that uh, set up. I'm going to go ahead and hit align images. So let's see what's going on here. That looks like an awesome alignment. So this is a previewer from PT GUI. And this is looking very close to what I want. It might have cooled things off a little too much for the walls, but that's, that's okay. We can deal with that. So I'm going to close that previewer. Going down to create panorama here. This is not something you need to learn or remember unless you're a PT GUI user. So I'm going to be bringing a TIFF back in and that leaves me a little more editing room and I'm going to have that at 16 bits per channel. Um, when we're finally done with this, this is going to get thrown away anyways. All right, now with everything set, I'm going to go ahead and click on create the pano. And so it's stitching that panorama together for us now. And once it's done stitching the panorama together, we'll hop back over to Lightroom. So it's almost done here, we just have to be a little patient. And these things do take time. Uh, these are usually some pretty sizable files. So keep that in mind when you're doing your own setups and editing. I'm gonna quit out of PT GUI, I don't need it anymore. And let's go back to our grid view. 
and we're not seeing the image and that's because it didn't import it back in I have to sync it so this is another little step that's not a big deal to me it does say I've got one new photo I'm gonna go ahead and hit the synchronize and that new photo is gonna be the tiff that we generated in PT GUI or in the theta stitcher so there we go there is the image and this is looking pretty good for a 360 let's zoom in here just looking around to see if we've got any pixelation it really did a great job on the window pull here and you'll also notice that it did a really great job in that kitchen area there is a little noise in there because we were bringing up something that was very underexposed before this is a very dark area so one of the things we can do, I'm going to hop over to the develop menu and I'm not going to do a big punch to this, but I'm going to do some luminance noise reduction. Let's bring that up to 20 and let's zoom back in here. So not as pixelated, not as noisy, and we're also not going to be having people zoom right into that area. Let's bring that back. So I brought the luminance back to zero and you can see now we've got some fuzzy noise going on in here. So I think I'm going to like that at 20. We're going to leave that that way and let's zoom back out. So we have generated the final 360 pano for ourselves. All I have to do now is actually export this. So I can export it to a JPEG and then I'm going to upload that JPEG to the 360 viewer of my choice. In my case, I'm using Kula uh, Kula.co and I'm very satisfied with that. I don't work for them. I don't have any affiliate links or anything. Uh, you can use Cloud Pano, Theasis, uh, Pano2 VR, whatever you'd like to use. Um, most of these things do the same thing um, for display. You know, they have different features in them. By the way, I just want to zoom in here. You can actually see the iPhone in the, um, in the little cage from when I was doing the uh, video. So we've got this one all set. It's ready to go. I'm pretty satisfied uh, with it overall. I might want to actually punch the exposure up even a little more. Let's see what 0.5 more does. And maybe that's a little too bright. So actually, we'll reset the exposure to where it is. And I'm always editing on a darker screen. I use a... Uh, I use a color checker passport and one of the color checker devices and it uh, every time it calibrates my monitor for me it has me in a brightness of about 50 percent so I know that a lot of you are watching my videos and looking at websites with your brightness dialed all the way up and um, so that's going to make a difference to you so I want to make sure I'm not blowing things out on viewers so my next step would be to go and export and in my case I would export full-size panos. I've got a preset for that in Lightroom where it exports to a folder called full-size panos. Uh, so pretty surprising there. Uh, we do it as JPEG, sRGB, quality is 100, and uh, we just have it output it there, and then I can load those panos over into Kula. I'm gonna go ahead and quit Lightroom Classic. We're not gonna upload this one right now because I've already done multiple ones that are very similar. So we're just gonna go take a look at Kula really quick. So I've done other shots in that kitchen area with the bracketing mode that I just showed you. And so now we're just waiting on the pinwheel of doom. I never thought that I'd see the pinwheel so much on my Macintosh, but there you go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in very quickly to Kula. And we're gonna go take a look at uh, one of my test my test beds for testing out the Theta Z really quick. So we've got the Granite Creek. So we've got the Theta Z1 interior testing here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one really quickly. And we're gonna be looking at a very similar one. So this one was made with PT GUI and with the Theta Z1. So I was using the dual fisheye plugin, which worked really nicely for me. So it came out pretty good. So very similar to that multi-bracketing. And as you can see, we've got detail out the windows and we've got detail in those darker areas. So the Theta Z1 really offers us some great solutions for lighting issues when we're doing interior 360s. So I'd suggest checking out the multi-bracketing mode that comes in the Theta Z1 and also downloading the plugin from Rico 
called the dual fisheye plugin. So either the multi-bracketing or the dual fisheye plugin are going to help you a lot to overcome challenging lighting situations through bracketing. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Please be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. We always like to hear from you. All right, we'll see you on the next video.